So Jesus shows himself for the first time as the master of the word. He was the living word of God. And when the mother of Jesus asks him, why could you do this to us? He said to her, did you not know that I shall be in my father's house? My father. Jesus repeats it again and again. My father. And the prayer where we come at most close to Jesus is where he learns us the prayer Pater Noster. What do you say in English? Uh, our, our, our Lord's Prayer, yes. Our Lord's Prayer. And there he addresses God with Father, Abba, he says, like a boy, a child. And what he teaches us is to see the world like children, like the children we are. Because he went into God and he became God's son when he was baptized. Jesus is not sent to the world that we shall be worshipping him. In the church, we prostrate the, before the crucifix, but Jesus is not really there. He is not in the crucifix. He does not say, worship me. He says, remember me. And in the other sacrament we have in the church, the Holy Communion, we eat his body and we drink his blood. And if this is horrible to you, then you must remember that this ritual goes back in ancient history and is so much older than Christianity. And in this ritual, he gives himself to us because he had no other things to give. He was poor. But the last supper, he gives himself to the community in order that they shall remember him. And then he says, when he arises to the heavens, don't look after me. Look at the ground, at the people where you are, because I will surely be where one or three of you are gathered and you may even meet me in the man who needs you, who meets you in a hidden way on the street, in the stranger. Because Jesus is not imprisoned to his church and there is even a Christianity which is without a church. When Jesus asks his disciple who they think he is and they don't know what to say and he is expecting an answer 
Then Peter, he says, you surely is the living Christ, Messiah. And we have two reports. The scriptures very often contradict each other or say the things in a different way. And in one of the textures in St. Matthew, Jesus praises Peter because he said this to him, that he was Messiah. In the other version from St. Mark and St. Luke, he says that they have to keep secret about it. They must not tell in the world because this truth is hidden. I think Jesus was not sure about his his relation to God. He was wavering all the time long and we hear him in different situations and when he really is trodden to the ground he cries that God has forsaken him. Eli Eli Lama Sabachthani on the cross. He is with him, he's right. He does the job and he says, I by the finger of God cast out devils. I by the spirit of God do these things. Where did he say, this power is mine. I have done it on my own strength. No way. No way. Jesus Christ, imagine he is God. If he is God as the Christians say. But this is what he says. John chapter 5 verse 31. He said, if I be a witness of myself, my witness is not true. If I say, look, I am so and so, I am the... My witness is not valid. He says. John 5 31. Then John 8, 13 and 14 says that the Jews come to him and quote his own words. They put his words back into his mouth. They say the Pharisees, means the priest of the Jews, therefore said to him, you bear witness of yourself, your witness is not true. Only his own words. This is what Jesus said in 531. So now they're telling him, say you, self-praise has no recommendation. Because you know, need that is, it's worthless, rubbish. Self-praise has no recommendation. That's what Jesus said. Now they said, you know, self-praise has no recommendation. If you bear witness of yourself, your witness is not true. That's what you said. So now Jesus says, but he answered, he said, Jesus answered and said to them, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. Look, he just said, if I bear witness of myself, it is not true. Now he said, no, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. <laughs> the man has to make up his own mind. Do prophets lie? You are being God. Do prophets lie? Jesus Christ, he's speaking about John the Baptist. The Jews had a prophecy that before the coming of the Messiah, Elias, Elias, Elijah will come first. So they asked him, he said, look, you say you're the Messiah, where is Elias? Where is Elias? Where is Elijah? Same name. So Jesus says, he says about John the Baptist, Yahya alayhi salam. In Matthew chapter 11, verse 11, he says, Verily I say unto you, most surely I am telling you, among those born of women, means a human being. There has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. The greatest of the Jewish prophets is Yahya alayhi salam, John the Baptist. Among those born of women, there has not risen another greater than John the Baptist. And again he says, in 11.14, And if ye will receive it, this is Elijah. John is Elijah. If you accept what I'm telling you, he is Elijah. Matthew 11.14 but now, when we find in the first chapter of John, 
book of John, verse 19 and 21, the Jews come to Jesus, and to John the Baptist, and they ask him a number of questions. Among them, verse 21, and they ask him, what then are you, Elijah? Jesus said he's Elijah. The man you are waiting for. They're asking now John, are you Elijah? He said, I am not. The mightiest messenger of God on earth, according to Jesus, he is denying Jesus. He says, Jesus says, this man is Elijah, and Elijah says, I'm, John says, I'm not. Between the two, who is speaking the truth? Can you imagine somebody asking Pastor Eric, Bob, where's D that? Who's D that? So he points to me, that's D that. And they ask me, you ask me, are you D that? I says, no. Either he is lying or I'm lying. Am I right? He says, I am dead, and I say, I'm not. Or I say, he's Pastor Bob, and he says, he's not. I either I am lying or he's lying. One of us is definitely not speaking the truth. Between John and Jesus, the mightiest of the Israelite prophets and Jesus Christ himself, one of the mightiest messengers of God. Between them now, Jesus says, he's Elijah, and John says, I'm not. Who is speaking the truth? We would like the pastor to tell us between the two. We Muslims, we are not to enter into this kind of controversy. It's not for us. Between the prophets of God, we are not going to judge who is true and who is false. That's not our job. But it is for the Christians to tell us who, between Jesus and John, who is speaking the truth. God Almighty is all-powerful. He can do what he pleases. But Jesus says, I can of my own self do nothing. God can do everything. If he's God, he says, I can of my own self do nothing. John chapter 5 verse 30. But, Jesus says, Mark chapter 10 verse 27. But looking at them, Jesus said, with men it is impossible, but with, with God, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. Whatever he wants to do, he is the doer of all he intends. Allah Ta'ala, God Almighty, He does what He pleases. Nobody can come in His way. He is irresistible, supreme. Jesus says He can do nothing and He testifies that God can do everything. He can't be God. Jesus can't be God. Then the racial connotations about Jesus. You see, we are against, especially the Scandinavian countries, we are very grateful to them for the fight they put up against South Africa, the whites of South Africa. They have been oppressing us for 300 years. The whites, white Christian rulers, the most regular churchgoers, greatest races of any people on earth. And the Scandinavians, they came to the rescue. They have been passing sanctions and everything they did. And the country, the white race is changing in South Africa. Alhamdulillah. But now, this racism, where did they get it from? Here, yeah. in the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 5. God in inverted commas, was a tribal Jew. It says, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. Judah means Jews. Can you imagine God being the lion of the tribe of Judah? Then Matthew 15, 24 says, but he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, only for the Jews. He is a racist. According to what he says, I am only sent for the lost sheep of the house of Israel. I want to know where the Danes fit in, and where the Swedes fit in, and the, and the Germans fit in. Are you all the lost tribes of the house of Israel? No, no, answer that. His titles, his titles as God, if he's God. Matthew 2, 2, he is the king of the Jews. A title of God, king of the Jews. John chapter 1, verse 49, and chapter 12, verse 13. He is the king of Israel, king of the Jews. According to Jesus, if he is God, the Gentiles are dogs. Gentiles mean all who are known Jews are all dogs. All of us, unless you say you are a Jew, you are his children. Otherwise, all dogs, whether you are a Danish or a Spanish or whatever you are. It is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Matthew chapter 15 verse 26. How can God Almighty treat his creation as dogs? 